Hey guys, it's uh, Luke Amory here from the uh, Gamberoo Mindset uh, show. <laughs> Look, you know, it's so awesome to be on the Prosperity or Prosper online show today with um, Prosper. And today I'm going to share my true story of overcoming brain cancer. And in that, it'll have my Gamberoo Mindset book, the bestseller. So, so awesome to drop some gold nuggets with you guys. And, um, Looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you so much, Prosper. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the Ganburu expert himself, Luke. Look how you do, my man. I'm thank you. Oh, look, I'm awesome, Prosper. Great to hang out with you, man. Oh, it's so great. Absolutely. I love your energy, bro. Absolutely. Well, I just went in with Ganbaru because I just learned about this word today and, and thank you for that. But we're going to be exploring what that is all about. I mean, obviously, Luke is now a mindset coach and he lives with a sense of making up for lost time. A lot of us as business people or as entrepreneurs, we get caught up in the nitty gritty of building our business and in, in trying to live a life of a happier existence. And we, we let go of ourselves and we don't know and forget the importance of living in the now. So this is what oh, Luke okay. helps other people um, and other entrepreneurs to achieve. And also he's also found a new joy in helping others achieve their dreams and actually win through some really horrible circumstances and to actually rediscover your mojo um, with your true purpose and passion in life. And really, if you don't feel well, you can't do well. Now, look, I mean, I could go on and on and Love talk it. about your days in Queensland when you were a fly in, fly out um, consultant those days. Tell us a little bit about your story, man, and how you got to be um, the Gunbaru um, consultant and author so to speak yeah cool man no thanks thank you so much prosper yeah yeah look we'll, we'll rewind the clock you know to god 2010 and i was working away as a fly in fly out uh plant operator in the open cup mining industry look you know i absolutely loved my job but here's the thing you know working away from my family high stress of um you know, 80 hours a week, uh, three weeks on, one week off in remote locations over six years or so, it got to me and I got burnt out, <clears throat> you know, so I was looking for a way out and I kept saying to the universe every night when I would go to, um, before I go to bed, it's very similar to the, uh, to the secret. Have you seen the secret prosper? Yes, 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 yes. The movie? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Be careful what yeah, you do. Totally. And um, very, very careful. It's like that genie, right? You're rubbing that genie bottle. Um, well, you know, that's what I used to do every night before I go to bed. And I'd sit there uh, after I'd finished my work and, and um, just med meditate for about, you know, four or five minutes. And I'd just sit there like that and say, dear universe, look, you know, I love what I do, but I'm looking for a way out. And you've got to be careful what you wish for because it does come true, man. Um, so in saying that, you know, it, it turned around on a dime um, in 2014, New Year's Day. That's right. Um, so did you want me to go on with, with bit, keep going, Prosper? Yeah, man. Great, okay, great so, stuff. Yeah. All right. So oh, cool, cool. So that's, that's remarkable. I mean, obviously, as, as, as a father, like you said, uh, mm. look, you know, you were working mm. so far away from um, your family and, you know, it was usually for long periods, like you say. Um, what do you feel like you were missing out on when your kids were growing? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Look, you know, I had a, um, I have two beautiful kids, right? And here's the thing is that, my son was only six months old, seven months old at that time when I was w working away. And my daughter was around seven or eight. <clears throat> so I was missing out on time, spending quality time with them and my wife, of course, you know, so not being at home and taking them to school and, and just being in their presence. That's what I was missing out on. But another key aspect on that was that I was missing out on weddings and funerals and and mind-blowing 
<clears throat> key objective parties that I wanted to attend. You know, I wanted to hang out with like-minded people where I was in a re remote location, the phone coverage was was poor, the internet was poor. And, you know, I just got to me in, in the end, you know, so that's what I was missing out on. And I just wanted to change so much, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. You might have been yeah. out there in the sticks where there was no connection, but we also yeah. have entrepreneurs that are actually working in the city that are not giving precedence or time to their family just because they yes. want to hustle, hustle, hustle. What sort of words have you got for people like that, uh, Ben? Yeah, man, you know, we do, we do get stuck in the mode of hustle, hustle, and hustle. We've got to look back and say, okay, where are we at? Okay, so where we want this to work out. We want our business to work. We all want our business to work. We want money to come in to provide for our family and our future. But there's no such present time as now. Because we can't, we, we can't get, get that back. Time is precious. Time is valuable. So, yeah, yeah, money is great. I understand that. Totally do. And I've been there myself. But from what I can share with um, everyone who's on a similar page to, to entrepreneurship is that be mindful that we've got to be spending some quality time with friends and family that support and uplift us. Yeah, um, and making that time, making the time to spend with your family and friends that support and uplift us, you know. Yeah, man, um, that's what I, what I feel. Yeah. Absolutely. So I can tell now that you're newly driven, um, you know, to actually take on your life with your own passions. Um, what has changed after you left the, you know, fly in, fly out, and now that you are, you know, in, in, you're a civilian, so to speak, <laughs> amongst <laughs> everybody else, yeah. Yeah, well, look, I, I don't wear a hard hat anymore. That's the difference. That's number one. And number two is, look, my outlook on life now is a whole lot different, you know, and my mindset. Uh, when, you know, when you get given a diagnosis that, you know, you could, um, possibly have another 14 or 15 months to live um, it, it, it's quite confronting and um, you like for my for myself I don't take life for granted anymore and I, I, I usually not usually but I strongly be mindful of my time and who I spend my time with now because it's so precious and I as I mentioned before, you know, being around people who are like-minded and who are going to prop you up, that's, that's it. And, and working away from my family was fun at the time. It's, it's no, it's, you know, time is more valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that yeah. you have found this newly um, found lease on life, you have started applying what you've come to call the Ganbaru Mindset. Um, and you've written a, bu a book about it. Can you just elaborate a little bit about what, what this mindset is all about and, and how you came about to become um, affiliated with it? Yeah, man. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, you prosper. Look, you know, when I was going through my cancer journey, my brain cancer journey, so for, for a little bit of history there of my journey, I had um, diagnosed with a golf ball sized brain tumor, which was located at the back of my cerebellum. And prior to the diagnosis, I had a gut feeling that there was something wrong, right? So I go in to and have a CAT scan because the first two admissions to the hospital, we couldn't identify what was causing the, the headaches and the vomiting and the sickness. and not being able to walk properly. So coming out of that CAT scan, they said to me, don't look at the screen when you look to the right hand side, when you walk out. So what did I do? I looked to the screen and then I see my scan and I see a golf ball sized tumor on that, on that screen. And then my gut feeling said, I thought, I, I thought so. I thought so. But my, when I was walking back to my bed, my hospital bed, there was a guy across from me who was having a pretty bad day. No matter what he was going through, I'm not sure um, how he pulled out of it. I, I don't know how he went, but 
I said to him, I reassured him, I said, look, because it wasn't about me. I said to him, mate, it's going to be okay. You know, you're going to be fine. And then the, the doctor came in and drew the curtains on me. And that's an interesting feeling when the doctor comes in and goes, like that. <laughs> and they go, well, um, Luke, uh, we, we, I'm sorry to inform you, but we've identified uh, a large growth for golf ball size at the back of your brain. I paused for a minute and I said, that's great. Now I know how to solve the problem. Right. Right. Because that prior to that, I didn't know what was wrong. So going back to the secret, I was always so mindful on how I was responding to the situation. I was staying in a positive mindset. So that relates to my Gambari mindset, which means tenacity, never giving up in challenging times, right? And um, we all have challenging times, no matter what they are, a flat tire in the car or no matter what. So we're just going to, we're going to stay positive and not react to a negative situation because we can literally drop the ball. Um, and that's what that means. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, obviously you have, you know, been on this journey and not minimizing your pain. You are now at a level where you can talk about it and also help other people, um, you know, who might be going through uh, such, uh, you know, maybe challenges like cancer, maybe a heart mm -hmm. attack, depression, or even, you know, sudden career change um that people don't know how to um deal with it so how is it that then you help these people to actually stay stay on track and not make a mess of the situation they're already in very good question and like you know i share i share my story with the world and i do speak from the heart when i'm up on the stage but i do have a um a 30-day mindset gambaroo challenge where uh everyone can actually get into the Gambaroo Mastermind group and download their 30 day um, challenge. Where in that is that it will keep your mindset on task and on vision on, on where you want to go because it all starts with our, our daily task and what we do. So in saying that, you know, I did mention before we do have, you know, some people do have challenging times and I understand that. So I usually, I do help people, um, through mentoring as well, one-on-one -on -one mentoring ships uh, on my website and um, through my workshops here on the Gold Coast. So, and i um, looking forward to it. So it's just beautiful. Absolutely. Now, look, obviously, I mean, what has happened has happened, but if you were to do it all over again, what is the one thing mm. that you'd actually um, look at and say, this is how I'm going to live my life? If I had to rewind the clock and go through all of it again, Absolutely. back to the mining industry, yes. that's a really good question. Um, I probably, I probably look at it in a way and saying, I'll do this for a little while, and then I'll get out of the mining industry, and I'll just go with the flow. It's that's a really I've never had that one before. Um, you know, where I said to myself, uh, nearly every day, wow when I was in the mining industry, yes, it was great money, but I didn't have that time, you know? So I, I try to probably turn it around and say, okay, well, look, you know what? I'm going to make something happen no matter what I have to do. And it might be something different. It might get me outside of my total comfort zone. Don't know what it'll be, but it's going to scare the heck out of me, but I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Look, we might have somebody who's watching this who's also going through certain challenges, um, you know, like maybe they've just had a heart attack or maybe they're in a career they're not really interested in or they're going through some sort of depression or um, they might have also been, uh, you know, diagnosed with a big C um, mm. and they're watching this show right now and they, you know, want to know more about how they can learn your, your Ganbaru uh, strategies um, what's the best way to get a hold of you there, Luke? Yeah, it's a good, good question, man. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through my website, uh, autowsgambaroomindset.com.au. There, with that, you can actually um, get a, uh, a copy of my Gambaru Mindset uh, best-selling book where I share my true story 
uh, you know, overcoming brain cancer, but also have simple strategies of, um, you know, creating a life of resilience. So, you know, through my story, I have a mission, right? I have a mission to wake people up. I understand that we do have challenging times, but we've got to remember why we're here for, you know, why we wake up every day. You know, what do we say to ourselves when we wake up in the morning? Because let's be honest, at the end of the day, we're all going to the same place. You know, it's what we do now to before we get there. And we, we've got to look on the other side of the fence. Okay. I, look, you know, if someone's had a diagnosis like I was or, or a heart attack and, you know, Jim Rohn talks about a heart attack is it's a wake up call, just like mine. It's a wake up call. So, um, they can have free, co uh, you know, free, not free copies, but they have a, a signed copy of my Gambaroo mindset book as well. I do have a, a gratitude rock in there that they can take home and, um, be blessed every day. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, if you've been watching this and maybe you're going through some sort of transversity or adversities and um, you don't know where to turn to, uh, who to talk to, there's no need to uh, suffer in silence these days. There's people like Luke that have gone through what you might be going through. And as you can notice, Luke now lives, um, you know, with a sense of making up for lost time and, you know, um, of the importance of living in the now and is helping other people be, do, and have a life that's of a happier existence. Since his newfound joy, he's also now helping other, other people achieve their dreams and actually win. And through sometimes, um, you know, helping them rediscover their mojo, you know, uh, when, when you think you've lost it all and your true purpose and passion in life. So you can succeed and be happy. Now, Luke, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spend with us on the show today and the value and also the, the education you've dropped, um, you know, um, the lessons you've dropped with us today, especially about the Ganbaru uh, mindset philosophy there. Thank you so much, Prosper. And likewise, man, I love your energy. It's so great to, to hang out with you and to share just my true story to help people to rediscover their life is a true gift, right? So we just gotta, we just gotta take the bull by the horns and, and just live life to the full. So thank you so much for helping me share my story. And I hope it really does help someone to inspire someone else or who's going for another, you know, interesting journey just like myself so thank you so much absolutely well thank you for the gift of time that you've given us today cool man no worries thank you prosper okay and then from now on whatever you say canon will be used against you in a court of law right love it <laughs> Oh, like, that's a, that's an awesome way to start the uh, session. <laughs>